My name is Todd Ahouse. The artwork I did my research on is Depression Breadline by George Segal. This sculpture is located at Crystal Bridges in Bentonville, Arkansas. George Segal is an American sculptor who was born in New York in 1924 and grew up on a chicken farm in New Jersey. He is of Jewish descent and spent his childhood working on the chicken farm to support his family during the Great Depression. Segal got his bachelor's degree in art education from New York University. He taught art and English at a local high school in Rutgers University. He began creating sculptures in the late 1950s. George Segal is most famous for his work with plaster casts to create the figures in his sculptures such as Man at the Table, The Diner, and The Holocaust. These sculptures are in collections at places such as the Jewish Museum in New York and the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. Depression Breadline was created in 1991 for the Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial. It was first made out of plaster, wood, and metal to be later cast in bronze. The faces of the men in the sculpture were plaster casts of Seagal himself and some of his closest friends. The first person in the breadline is plaster cast of Leon Bible, who was a former artist for the WPA Federal Art Project. The sculpture was at the Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial until 2015 when it was transferred to Crystal Bridges. Depression breadline, like all artwork, can be described by its formal elements, such as shape, space, color, texture, and line. The shapes in depression breadline are separated into two categories. You have the sharp, angular shapes of the brick wall and doorway. Then you have the flowing and irregular shapes of the men standing in line. This contrast helps to emphasize the human element of this sculpture. The space in depression breadline is most notable in the formation of the men. They are all in a line looking in one direction. This, while being normal behavior for men standing in line, could symbolize the men looking forward to a better tomorrow. The color in the sculpture is almost monochromatic. The only distinct hues come from the tarnishing of the bronze in some places and not in others. This creates the somber tone of the sculpture. The value and intensity of the colors in the sculpture are very dark. The texture of the sculpture is not what you'd expect from bronze. Depression breadline was originally produced in plaster, wood, and metal. The texture of these original materials are still evident on the sculpture. The lines on the brick wall behind the men are made up of parallel rows of horizontal bricks that are perpendicular to the sides of the door. The lines of the men are irregular. Using the biological approach, this sculpture appears to be a solemn reminder of the hardships of the Great Depression experienced by George Segal. George Segal grew up in the Great Depression and saw firsthand the struggle of ordinary people to survive. The first man in line is Leon Bible, who actually stood in bread lines during the Great Depression. George Segal is considered one of the leading sculptors of the pop art movement. The pop art movement centered around commercial sources such as mass media and everyday items. It aimed to blur the line between art and culture. The majority of pop artists began their careers in commercial art such as graphic design and making magazine covers. Many pop artists tried to convey a sense of objectivity by using mundane objects in their art. A good example of this is Richard Hamilton's Just What Is It That Makes Today's Home So Different, So Appealing. Brands such as Tootsie Pop and Ford are prominent as well as elements from other sources such as the picture of the bodybuilder and the woman. George Segal's Depression Breadline has elements of paintings from the Romanticism era such as Theodore Jericho's Raft of the Medusa. Both of these pieces of art depict tragedies faced in the nations of the artists. The Raft of the Medusa tells the story of the tragic injustices faced by the crew of the French frigate Medusa. Similarly, Depression Breadline shows the hardships faced by Americans during the Great Depression and the toll it took on them. Both pieces of art also have a very dark intensity, which adds to the somber tone that both artists were going for. I chose Depression Breadline because the realism of the sculpture caught my eye when I first visited Crystal Bridges. The plaster casting done by George Segal really helped capture the emotions of the men, which made the art much more poignant. I enjoyed Depression Breadline because it feels more like a three-dimensional painting than a sculpture when you're looking at it. This makes the viewer much more immersed in the emotions of the men in the line. This sculpture is a great reminder to people who did not live through the Great Depression like George Segal did how it affected the citizens of the United States. I think this is a very important piece of art for American history and it should never be forgotten.